Welcome everyone, make yourself comfortable. For the next couple of minutes, we'll embark on a journey to the core. Thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to cover a powerful but little known programming paradigm called Aspect Oriented Programming with the help of Aspect J. As always, the first thing we are going to do is to incorporate Aspect J into our project. For that, we are going to define two properties, one for the dependency and the other for the plugin. The dependency is going to be a compiled one. It's going to allow us to introduce aspects with simple Java classes and annotations. And for the plugin, this is the configuration. We must provide the compliance level, the source and the target versions. And we can choose to provide information of what the plugin is doing. Next, we are going to use this plugin for source compilation as well as for test compilation. And finally, we are going to explicitly provide the version of SpecJ to use. This matches the dependency. Now let's review the flow tracing functionality we introduce with Log4J. Let's get rid of social code in counter inventory implementation and shopping cart implementation. And after deleting social code, this is the final result for the three classes. In order to reintroduce flow tracing, we are going to use aspects. Here is the flow tracing aspect. As you can see, we are using the aspect annotation. And there are going to be two point codes, constructors and methods. Both are abstract. Before a method or a constructor, we are going to dress the entry as before. Here, we are providing the name of the class, the name of the method or constructor, and the arguments the user passed to such a method or constructor. After returning from a method, we are going to trace the exit, as before, with the message we got from the trace entry method, and similarly, after a constructor return, we are going to trace the exit. In the counter flow tracing aspect, we are defining the point cuts. For constructor, we are going to pick the initialization of every single constructor in the counter class. In method, we are going to pick the execution of any single method in the counter class. In a similar fashion, in this class, for the constructor point code, we are going to pick the initialization of every single constructor of the classes that implements can contain products, and that's possible thanks to this plus sign. For the method point code, we are going to pick every single method on those classes that implements the interface. Now, let's run the test and let's see the logs. In the aspect JS logs, we can see how a join point for a method execution of a method called getTotalPriceValue in the inventory implementation type is being affected by an advice of type after returning from the Constraints Pro flow tracing aspect. And if we visualize the logs in the file, we can see the exact same logs we have before. Now let's see a trace for the add into cart utility method. Remember, this method decreases a product in inventory and increases the product in a user shopping cart. And as you can see here, we enter the decrease amount method with Mocha a smartphone and one as the amount. We enter the decrease count in the counter with exit with exit in inventory implementation, and we enter the increase amount method in shopping cart implementation. We enter the increase count in counter, exited, and exit the increase amount method in shopping cart implementation. Why? Remember, inventory relies 
on the counters methods through his instance member stock and the same thing for shopping car through his content member field. Now is the turn of the validations. First, I transform the app validation test just to exercise the validations that we are going to introduce through the aspect. As we have before, we have a valid product, a bad product with all the constraints violated, a call to the get name method, a product which cost is greater than his price, an invalid user, and finally we are using an invalid product for the set products method in inventory. In the validation aspect class, we have, as before, the validator factory, the validator, and the executable validator. We are introducing a utility method for pre-reprinting the violations, and here are our point cuts. We are defining one for ignoring the two string, the hash code, and equals methods, just for avoiding running validation for these cases where these get methods are called inside the equals and hash code and to string methods. The next point code are packages to ignore as well. Here we have the validations and aspects packages. The constructor's point code is very similar. Every constructor in the user class or any class in the implementation package. The same thing for methods. Any method in the shopping cart package, ignoring the method from the object class that we defined before, as well as the packages. For the before constructor's advice, we're going to obtain the constructor as well as the arguments, and we are going to use the validate constructor parameters in order to validate such a constructor call is done with the correct arguments. If there is any violations, we are going to lock that. Similarly, for the aster returning constructor, this time we validate the new instance. For before method, we use the validate parameters method, and in after returning method, we use the validate return value. Now, if we run the app validation tests, and we visualize the logs, you can see in line 40, the first violation we introduced. The new created instance of a stockable product implementation has the following violations. Brand must not be empty, price must be greater than or equal to zero, the collection must not be empty, and so on. This, of course, was introduced in this piece of code. And for the get name method, we can see the violation here. In line 43, the method getName of a stockable product has the following violation. Return value from getName must not be empty. Here, in line 66, we can see the violation for the user constructor. Violations we introduce in line 40 in the test. And for this one, Here in line 55, you can see the violation message. The cost of the product is greater than its price. Last but not least, let's see the cascade violation we introduced at the end. Here in line 124, we can see that the set products method invocation in inventory has the following violations. The cost of the first element in products in such a method should be greater than or equal to zero. What is awesome about this is the fact that we can enable, disable, and even evolve the flow tracing and validation code without affecting the target classes and methods. Plus, the new code is localized in one place instead of being repeated and scattered everywhere in our source code. Now is the turn 
Download the code from the link at the description and discover the power of aspect-oriented programming and AspectJ. Remember to share your experience in the comments and as always, have fun. Thank you for joining me on my journey to the core. See you soon.